Today we're out here with my top pick minivan, the 2019 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. This is also my top pick if you're looking for a fuel efficient, family friendly three row vehicle. If you didn't already know it by now, the average minivan in America has considerably more second row and third row room and about double the cargo capacity of the largest three row crossovers out there. So if you're a family that needs an absolutely functional third row, this is going to be more practical than the new entries from Kia like the new Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, the Volkswagen Atlas, the new Ford Explorer, etc. And we also have more interior room in here than you'll find in a Chevy Tahoe. One of the things you'll notice immediately approaching any modern minivan in America versus the average three row crossover is that this is definitely wider. That's one of the reasons that the interior is more comfortable. The other thing you'll notice is that the front end styling is definitely more passenger car than crossover or truck. That's also very similar to what we see in the Odyssey, the Sienna, the Sedona, etc. One of the changes for 2019 is that you can now get the S trim appearance package on the hybrid rather than just on the gasoline only models. So we have a blacked out grill up top, blacked out portions down below as well. As you can see down there at the bottom of your screen, the average minivan in America is notably larger than most mainstream three row crossovers. The proportions are also different. So we have a much shorter hood, as you can see right there, than we see in some of those three row crossovers like a Mazda CX-9. And then we have a much bigger body behind. That's also why this is so much more accommodating for passengers and for cargo. Obviously we have sliding doors right here, just as you'd expect in a modern minivan. And then we have this very flat rear end back here, which helps improve not only cargo capacity, but also third row headroom. Out back, we have partial LED tail lamps. We have an LED light strip there, but the turn signal that we see right here is an incandescent element, as is the backup lamp there. You'll find well-integrated parking sensors at the bottom of the bumper and definitely less ground clearance than we find in many of those modern three-row crossovers. There was a time where a large number of crossovers in America were getting a little bit closer to the ground, but with the latest crop of crossovers out there, they've definitely jacked things up to at least eight inches of ground clearance in the vast majority of what you might call the competition to the Pacifica. Chrysler is not directly advertising the Pacifica Hybrid as a plug-in hybrid because they say in their market research the average minivan shopper out there is still a little bit confused about exactly what a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid are. So let's get that out of the way right up front. This is not a mild hybrid system like we find under the hood of a Ram pickup truck in the so-called e-torque system. This is a full hybrid system and it has a plug-in mode. That means that this will operate as a hybrid vehicle where you don't have to plug it in at all if you don't want to, and it will give you 30 miles per gallon if you do that, but it's also a plug-in hybrid, meaning that it has a bigger battery pack that you can plug in at home, charge up, and then drive as an electric vehicle. If you plug it in, you'll get about 30 miles of overall electric range. After that range is exhausted, it will then default to standard hybrid operation where it's just burning gasoline to move the vehicle forward. In hybrid operation, power comes from this V6 engine right here under the hood. It is a 3.6 liter Atkinson cycle V6. When combined with the electric motors and the battery pack, we get 260 horsepower combined. Overall horsepower in electric only mode is somewhere around 110 to 120 horsepower, although FCA does not give us an official specification for that mode. 120 horsepower may not sound like a great deal, but it's more than enough to keep this nearly 5,000 pound minivan at highway speed, 75, 80 miles an hour or so. Now, acceleration is a different matter. If you get a little bit happy with the throttle pedal, then it will have to turn on the gasoline engine to accelerate you. But once you've achieved that 75 mile an hour cruising speed, it will then turn it off and then run on electric only until the battery has been exhausted. The battery is located right here in the middle of the Pacifica under the floor where the stow and go second row seats would go in the normal Pacifica. That means that we do have standard seats here that we find in any other minivan. They slide forward and backward, they recline, they come out of the minivan as well. But you do have to lift them up and out just like you would in a Pacifica or an Odyssey. The battery pack is liquid cooled and thanks to its large size, it does qualify for the maximum federal tax credit right now of $7,500. The battery is charged via this J1772 charge port right here on the front quarter panel. There is an onboard 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger that will charge this battery in about two hours. If you do have the ability to charge this at home or at work, then your cost of operation will logically vary depending on exactly the cost of your electricity. Even in my neck of the woods where electricity is generally speaking expensive, this is still cheaper to operate on my electric rates than to feed this gasoline. 
For a minivan, I'm gonna give these seats 10 out of 10 points when it comes to front seat comfort. We have a four-way adjustable lumbar support for the driver and front passenger. That's something that we don't really find in the competition. Generally speaking, most of the competition's passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver's seat, but we do find that in the Pacifica. We also have a tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion and overall a very comfortable seating position. I'm sure if any of you out there have friends that own a minivan, one of the first things they'll tell you is they love the overall seating position. That's true not only of the Pacifica, but also of the Odyssey, the Sienna, etc. A significant change since the Pacifica Hybrid first launched is that we now have the availability of a two-position seat memory over there on the driver's door. For some reason, that was one of the things that the Hybrid didn't get when they first launched this model. Overall second row comfort comes in at 9 out of 10 points. We don't have the availability of those Ottoman style seats that we find in the Sienna and some of the other competitors. And these seats do not move side to side. They simply move forward and backward. Comparing this to the regular Pacifica, you'll immediately notice how much more comfortable the second row seats are. That's because again, these are not the stow and go seats. These are the captain's chairs that simply slide forward and backward. We do have fold down armrests on each side and they do tilt and slide forward to allow easier access to the third row if you want to do that, or you could just go through the middle right here. One of the reasons that's available is because the hybrid is available only as a seven seat vehicle. The battery pack that's right there under the floor adds nearly 400 pounds overall to the Pacifica, and that 400 pounds had to come out of the overall payload capacity. That reduced payload capacity quite simply meant that the eighth seat right here in the middle of the second row couldn't happen. One of the main selling points for the non-hybrid Pacifica has long been child seat practicality because it is the only minivan that allows you to keep a child seat latched into place and still tilt and slide that second row seat forward to allow easier access to the third row. If you get the eight passenger version of the regular Pacifica, that's a pretty big deal. But in the hybrid Pacifica, because we don't have that second row stow and go seating, we can't move these seats in the same motion. So you do just have that forward and backward slide ability that you'd have to go around the child seat and use this middle section to get back here into the third row. As with the rest of the minivan competition in America, the third row is the main reason to buy a minivan over the average crossover out there. We find significantly more headroom back here. I have about an inch of overall headroom left and the seat bottom cushion is not as close to the floor as the average three row crossover either, making this much more comfortable for adults to sit back here. The third row bench is also significantly wider than something like a Toyota Highlander, and you'll really notice that whether you're putting child seats or adults back here. The middle seat in the third row is still not an ideal place for an adult to sit, but I have more room back here than I'd find in any of the crossover competition. I have about half an inch of headroom left. The model that we're driving does have the optional dual pane moonroof, so we have a very large one over the front and second rows right there, and then a separate glass section for the third row. Other nice touches back here are a large number of cup holders. We have two on one side, three on the other, USB charging port, and window shades built right there into the third row. Because of the position of the Pacifica's battery pack under the second row foot area, we have the same sized cargo area as the regular model, over 32 cubic feet. That's one of the big differences between this and the average three row crossover out there. This is 30 to 50% larger than any of the three row competition, even if we're talking about newer entries like the Volkswagen Atlas, the Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, etc. The cargo area back here is very deep and that's how we can put these 22 inch roller bags completely flat back there and then stick other stuff. We still have not approached that bumper height right there. You can see how many bags you can put back here. Seven behind the third row. That's definitely more than we find in the average crossover out there. If you fold the third row flat, then we get over 87 cubic feet of storage space. If you remove the second row seats, then we get over 140 cubic feet of storage space and enough room in here to put four by eight sheet goods. The ability to fit 4 by 8 sheet goods in a minivan has long been a classic differentiator between the Pacifica, the Odyssey, the Sienna, and some of those European-sized minivans that we've been able to find in America more recently. For instance, if you want to compare this to something like a Ford Transit Connect, you will not be able to fit those larger sheet goods in it, but you will with this lid closed in the Pacifica, the Odyssey, the Sienna, etc. Moving to the inside, you can see the dual moonroof setup. We have that small one over the third row and this larger one over the first and second rows. Chrysler places the rear climate controls just above the passenger side sliding door. From this angle, you can see that we have height adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and front passenger, as well as the second row seats. Since we're driving the S trim, we have the embroidered S right there on the front seats. The leather seats are perforated because the front row is both heated and ventilated. If we move over to the front doors, we find a reasonable amount of soft plastics. This is pretty similar to what we find in the Kia and the Honda, but definitely more premium materials than what we find in the Toyota Sienna. 
The premium materials continue as we move on over to the dashboard. We have a soft touch injection molded upper section, soft touch lower section, and then some after stitching to help dress things up a little bit. We have a smallish bin style glove compartment. I am a little disappointed in the size right there, but there's a great deal of storage going on in the rest of the cabin. If we continue on over to the center of the dashboard, we again find more premium materials than we find, especially in the Toyota Sienna. This system features Android Auto and Apple CarPlay integration, and as with the other FCA products, you'll notice that it operates in this section of the display, so we still have access to some of the rest of the system functions without completely exiting CarPlay or Android Auto. So we have the climate control temperatures there for the driver and front passenger, exterior temperature, status of the vehicle's Wi-Fi, and then direct access to these other controls down here. So if I wanted to pop this button right here and turn on the ventilated seat and then click off of that, you'll notice that CarPlay remains right there. Similar things happen with the climate control screen right there. I can click over to that and then click back to CarPlay immediately. If I want to see what the hybrid system is up to, you'll find that under the apps right here. This is also where you'll find a wide variety of different system functions. All these different things are listed under the apps, passenger heating, driver heated seat, uh, heated steering wheel, surround camera. We do have the 360 degree camera system on this particular model. And if I click over to the last screen, that's where we find the hybrid electric option right there. You can see that the engine is running right now. It just started because it needs to charge the battery. The climate control is using one kilowatt. One of the big advantages of this full hybrid system, as I mentioned earlier, is that the air conditioning is electric, so you don't have to have the engine running the whole time. The last thing that we find in Uconnect apps is the control for the Uconnect theater system in the rear seats. There has been some talk about this system being a little bit less reliable than some of the competitive infotainment systems that we see from other manufacturers out there. I have noticed in my own vehicle with Uconnect that the system will occasionally restart itself once every three or 4,000 miles or so. It's not terribly often. It's actually never happened to me while driving the Pacifica Hybrid, but it is something that you may wanna know about. Personally, I'm willing to trade a little bit of software reliability for extra system functions. That's something that I've mentioned before, and that definitely applies to this version of Uconnect because it's an awful lot more feature-rich and definitely prettier than what we find in the current generation Sienna. Below the infotainment system, we find the gear shifter, drive, and then low, we press in and toggle one more over for. Think of the low as the enhanced engine braking or enhanced regen braking system that we also see in other hybrids out there. So this is analogous to the Toyota B mode that we find in the Prius. We have the automated parking button right there. This does have the 360 degree camera and the automated parking system, parking sensor enable disable button, lane sense enable disable button, volume and browse knob for the infotainment system, and then some additional physical buttons for the climate control. As we see in other FCA vehicles, these are duplicate buttons, so you can do the climate control either in the screen or with the physical buttons, whichever is your preference. We then have a button for the electric parking brake. Working our way down the console, we have an area where you can store your smartphone or other media device, a USB port auxiliary input. Those integrate with the system up front. We then have a Blu-ray player and a USB port that integrate only with the system in the back. Below that, there's a storage cubby with some coin dividers. You can definitely put some large items in there. Between the front seats, we find the first of many cup holders. There's also a small storage compartment right in front of that. And if I move the key out of the way, we see a large storage bin right there. This storage area is sized appropriately for larger smartphones as long as there isn't a USB cable connected to them. While we're here, let's take a quick look at the vehicle's key. This is a little bit different than most of the other FCA keys out there. Buttons for the side doors, button for the power rear hatch, double click right over here to start the engine. Note that since we're in a hybrid, this is not just engine start, but really cabin climate precondition because it will do that whether it's plugged in or not, and then lock and unlock. If you're thinking that this storage cubby was a little bit shallow, that's because there is another little drawer down here that pulls out. We have cup holders, and if I pull out further, we have access to an even deeper storage compartment. The instrument cluster has been tweaked for the hybrid model. We have a power and charge gauge over here on the left, and then a very large fuel gauge on the right. The LCD in the middle has been reconfigured to give us a battery and engine power gauge right here to specifically show you what is coming from the engine and what is being pulled out of the battery. We then have our range indications over here on the right side of the LCD, a total range, range from electricity, range from battery. There's then a percentage display for the battery up top, and then we get our pretty typical FCA instrument cluster in the middle, various different gauges, oil temperature, oil pressure, oil life, battery voltage, etc display of the active safety systems, hybrid info, you can see our fuel economy there and some various different readouts, hybrid range, a little efficiency coach to help you drive more efficiently, and then a different representation of the same gauge that's over on the left side. The trip information screens have also been reconfigured to show you the distance on battery, the distance on gasoline, and your total MPG. 
I have to say this is one of my favorite steering wheels on the market right now. We have some sport grips up top. It's nice and thickly rimmed. There's also a decent amount of style going on here. Depending on the interior options that you select in your various Chrysler vehicles, you could get a two-tone version of the steering wheel. We have this trim strip right here in the middle to give it a little bit of extra visual interest. I also think that overall the steering wheel is quite functional. This button module corresponds to that multifunction LCD in the middle. It's pretty easy to uh, use, pretty self-explanatory. We have some direct access buttons for your phone, voice command button over there. The cruise control buttons uh, require a little bit of explanation. This one is the Raider Adaptive Cruise Control Enable Disable button. This one is the one you would use if you want to use standard non-adaptive cruise control. And then we would adjust our following distance with these buttons. You'd adjust the volume and the track using the buttons on the back of the steering wheel. We have volume up and down on the right, track up, down on the left. We don't have any shift paddles on the back like we do find in some of the other FCA vehicles. When it comes to the performance scores at the top of your screen, you should know that this is as compared to not just minivans, but also larger three row crossovers in America, because lots of folks out there are certainly shopping crossovers and minivans with one another. Even though the hybrid model has less power and more weight to haul around than the regular Pacifica, overall performance is surprisingly good. We clocked zero to 60 in 7.1 seconds in this model. That's two tenths of a second slower than the lighter non-hybrid Pacifica, but notably faster than many of its minivan competitors. For instance, the Kia Sedona, which is smaller and lighter than this, takes about a half second longer to go zero to 60. This also manages to be a little bit faster than the Toyota Sienna, but this is a little bit slower than the Honda Odyssey, thanks to its newer 10-speed automatic transmission in the top end trims. If you don't get the top end trims of the Odyssey, then it's right around this same zero to 60 time. 60 to zero braking happened in 138 feet, which is a little bit longer than the rest of the minivans in America, but not by too much. Most of the minivan competition comes in right between 130 and 135 feet. The design of this hybrid system is actually more closely related to the Ford, General Motors, and Toyota hybrid systems. It's a planetary power split device. Very much like the system that we find under the hood of the Chevy Volt, either one or both electric motors can help drive the vehicle forward in electric only mode. And then when operating as a hybrid, the two motors and the engine work in coordination to move the vehicle forward. This hybrid system may sound complicated, but in reality, it is very simple. There are fewer parts going on in this hybrid system than in the average automatic transmission out there. For instance, this vehicle has no reverse gear. If it wants to go in reverse, it simply spins the electric motor backwards. Even though the added weight isn't too noticeable when it comes to acceleration and braking, it is noticeable when it comes to overall handling. This doesn't have the same kind of handling feel out on the road as the regular Pacifica. It definitely feels a little bit bigger, a little bit less willing to change directions. That's gonna lower the overall handling score down to a B minus. Keep in mind again that this is as compared to not just minivans, but also large three row crossovers. One thing that we don't find in this that we do see in some of those larger three row crossovers is a lot of body lean. Body lean's relatively well controlled in the minivan set, generally speaking, definitely better than some of those larger three row crossovers like a Traverse, a Telluride, Palisade, Atlas, etc. Remember that not only is this minivan lower to the ground, the center of gravity is notably lower than many of those three row crossovers as well, just due to the overall design of a modern minivan. Out on a rougher gravel road like we're driving on right here, you'll definitely notice the difference between the average minivan and the average crossover in America. This is gonna be softer, more compliant, definitely more comfortable for longer highway journeys. If I were selecting a vehicle for a long road trip, the Pacifica Hybrid is definitely something that I would choose. Compared to the non-hybrid Pacifica, the extra weight of the battery pack does seem noticeable. It feels like this one is a little bit heavier, a little bit softer out on the road, definitely glides over some of those larger imperfections a little bit better than the regular version. Some of that is down to the hybrid system itself, and some of that is down to the tire and wheel options that we find on the hybrid model, which are a little bit different than the regular Pacifica. We get higher profile tires, and the tires themselves are a little bit different. The Chrysler hybrid system has an unexpectedly high level of polish. Whether we're talking about transitions from EV mode to hybrid mode or hybrid mode to EV mode or regen braking to friction braking, this has a very well put together feel to it. Those mode changes are far less noticeable in this than in the current generation Highlander Hybrid. We don't know what the new 2020 Highlander Hybrid will be like. You'll have to wait till around December for us to sample that particular model and compare it to the Pacifica Hybrid. But at the moment, this definitely feels better put together. You'll really notice the difference when we're regen braking moderately and then we move to an aggressive braking mode. This feels very natural, very normal, and we see sort of a little bit of a stutter in the Toyota Hybrid system, a moment where it feels like no braking is happening. In our cabin noise test, this cabin came in at 70 decibels with the engine running and just a hair quieter if the engine was off. One of the things you'll notice immediately about the Pacifica Hybrid is how quiet this cabin is, whether we're talking about other minivans out there or those larger three-row crossovers. 
When it comes to overall fuel economy, I'm going to give this model an A+. There's really very little to compare this minivan to, but whether you're comparing this to something like a Toyota Highlander Hybrid or a regular minivan, fuel economy is absolutely excellent. We've been averaging 32 miles per gallon when driving this just as a hybrid, not charging it at all. And then when operating as a plug-in hybrid vehicle, we'll be getting about 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, plus again about 32 miles per gallon when driving it as a hybrid. Let's take a quick break from the road and discuss how plug-in hybrid vehicles calculate their overall efficiency scores that you see on the infotainment screen or in the instrument cluster. Because the Pacifica Hybrid and some of the other hybrids on the market in America calculate their efficiency very differently than vehicles like the Chevy Volt. You've probably heard Volt owners out there saying, my Volt gets 250 miles per gallon, 300 miles per gallon, and so forth. This vehicle is never going to show you those lofty numbers because Chrysler is trying to give some sort of relative value to the electricity that you're consuming. Meanwhile, on the Chevy Volt, those efficiency numbers act like the electricity is free. Say we drive a Chevy Volt 60 miles and it burnt one gallon of gasoline in that time it's gonna say that the Chevy Volt got 60 miles per gallon. Some of it on electricity, some of it on gasoline. Total miles, 60. Total gasoline used one gallon, therefore 60 miles per gallon. The Pacifica's computer is going to say, well, I got 30 miles per gallon when operating as a hybrid, and then perhaps I got 58 or 60 MPGE while operating as an electric vehicle. And then it's gonna smush those two numbers together and give you an overall fuel economy score that could be perhaps 39 or 40 or 50 miles per gallon even, but definitely lower than what we see in the Chevy Volt. And the difference is gonna be more extreme the longer you go on electricity. Because again, it is going to be using its calculated MPGE value to give you that number in the instrument cluster. That is very important to keep in mind. So even if you're driving this electric only, that overall average number is not gonna be as lofty as we find in the Chevy Volt, but logically, this is going to be more real world because again, they're trying to give you that calculated value relative efficiency when operating as an electric vehicle. There's a definite advantage to having a plug-in hybrid system like this if you live in a mountainous area. Unlike a traditional hybrid, which would completely fill its battery pack after only going down a few hundred feet of elevation, this will keep regenerating down thousands and thousands of feet because of the size of the battery pack. Going up and down a 2200 foot mountain pass, this vehicle was able to regenerate electricity all the way back down the hill, and that was about 5% of overall battery capacity. When talking about operational costs, remember that hybrids and plug-in hybrids have an advantage beyond just fuel costs. My daily commute is 60 miles round trip, so assuming that I was only able to charge on one side of that commute, I'd be driving half on electricity, half on gasoline. That would stretch out my oil change interval to about double what you would find in the non-hybrid Pacifica. In addition, even though I do drive over a mountainous commute, this vehicle has very aggressive regen braking, thanks to the larger capacity and larger output and input capacity of the battery pack that's right behind me. That means that the vast majority of stopping is done with the electric motor, not with the brake pads, and they'll last a little bit longer as a result. If you're willing to give up some of the handling ability, perhaps a little bit of acceleration and braking distance that we find in a select number of three-row crossovers out there, then the Pacifica Hybrid is going to be an excellent option. This has a very quiet, very comfortable cabin, and it is incredibly fuel efficient in this segment. Remember that we're talking about a 5,000 pound vehicle that can go zero to 60 in just over seven seconds, but gets real world fuel economy of 30 miles per gallon or greater. And of course, if you're looking to shift some of your consumption from gasoline to electricity in a three row format, this is going to be one of the only options out there. Overall, the Pacifica Hybrid is one of the most impressive plug-in hybrid or hybrid systems that we've driven in some time here. The hybrid trim starts at $39,995, which is above average as far as a base price for a minivan in America goes. But again, keep those tax credits in mind. The other thing that's important to remember is that the hybrid model starts at a different trim level than the base model. It starts at the Touring Plus trim, which starts at 33245 for the non-hybrid model. So you've already worked your way up two trim levels in order to get into the hybrid to begin with. But if you qualify for the maximum in state and local incentives, especially if you live in Colorado where they have one of the biggest incentives available right now, you could get the hybrid model effectively for less than a base non-hybrid model. But I think to really understand the hybrid, we need to dive into the numbers here. So the annual fuel cost for a non-hybrid Pacifica at 20,000 miles a year, three and a half dollars a gallon, you're gonna be spending about $3,200 in fuel costs if you get the 
EPA's fuel economy of 22 miles per gallon on average. Most folks out there really won't be getting 22 miles per gallon. However, they'll probably be averaging around 19 or 20 miles per gallon because of the time you spend at stoplights, at stop signs, the amount of time you spend idling, waiting for the kids to get in and out of the vehicle, etc. A lot of that is eliminated with the Pacifica Hybrid. So in real world driving, you'll be getting better than the 50% delta that we see according to the EPA. But even if we just talk about EPA numbers, the Pacifica, the Odyssey, the Sienna, etc., they all get 22 miles per gallon average. So the delta is going to be the same whether we're talking about Pacifica versus Pacifica Hybrid or Pacifica Hybrid versus any of the other minivan competition. The fuel economy in the Pacifica Hybrid is so good that even if you never charged it at all and never operated it as an EV, you'd still be saving about $900 a year versus the competition. If you were able to plug it in and charge it as we were, driving it about half the time or so as an EV for our complete week, you'd be saving about $1,400 a year in terms of overall fuel costs. And if you were able to plug it in all the time and very rarely end up using the gasoline engine, then you could be saving upwards of $2,500 or $2,600 a year in terms of overall fuel costs versus the Pacific Hybrid and any other minivan in America. With an average family savings ranging from $1,400 to over $2,000 a year versus versus the average minivan in America, that's enough to take a family of four on a short Disneyland vacation every other year or so. As we move into the comparison section, the big two things to keep in mind about the Pacifica Hybrid are that we lose the eighth seat capability and we lose second row stow and go because that's where the battery pack is. The end result of those two losses are that the Pacifica ends up being very comparable to a lot of the other minivans in America. No other minivan has second row stow and go except the Chrysler and Dodge minivans. And a lot of the other minivans out there only seat seven maximum. So the eighth seat may be a factor for some, may not be for others. If you need the eighth seat, then you won't be able to get the hybrid. Because there are no other hybrid minivans in America, we're going to make the comparison section very short here. The first and most logical competitor is the Honda Odyssey. I get asked very frequently about Odyssey versus Pacifica. What's always struck me as interesting in this comparison is that for the most part, most of the Odysseys and Pacificas you'll see out on the road share the same 9-speed automatic transmission. So when we get questions here at Alex and Auto saying, I don't know about the Pacifica, I've always heard that Chrysler transmissions have short lifetimes, I say, well, they're the same transmission. So if you're worried about transmission lifetime, you will have the identical worry on the Pacifica as on the Odyssey. The 9-speed automatic transmission really isn't my favorite front-wheel drive transmission at the moment. I really like Honda's new 10-speed, so if you're looking at the very top-end trim of the Odyssey, then that does have an advantage over the Pacifica. However, I prefer the hybrid system over even those setups because of the extra fuel economy, the electric range, etc. If you're looking at a Chrysler Pacifica and you're thinking, I really don't like the way that 9-speed shifts, the hybrid version is an excellent way to go. When you're comparing the regular Odyssey to the regular Pacifica, the second go stow and go seating, the ability to keep child seats latched into place, those are excellent sales points for the Chrysler Pacifica. But when you compare the hybrid version to the Odyssey, you lose a lot of those benefits that we see. It's worth noting that you'll also lose the spare tire in the Pacifica, although you could get one yourself aftermarket and just have it hanging out in the cargo area. The Odyssey has long been a very practical vehicle in this segment, but compared to the Pacifica Hybrid, it's going to be more expensive thanks to the tax credits that we find on the plug-in. It's also going to be less efficient, considerably less efficient. Again, you could realize a savings of $1,400 to $2,400 a year, depending on exactly how much you can charge your minivan. Moving over to the Toyota Sienna, we see something very similar in terms of the cost of operation and the cost of purchase. The Sienna is definitely more expensive than the Pacifica. The Sienna offers the only optional all-wheel drive system in this segment, but no hybrid system is available in the Toyota minivan. And overall, the Sienna is the oldest in this group, and it definitely feels like it on the inside. Toyota has updated a few things over the years in the Sienna, but the bulk of the vehicle definitely feels less modern than any of the other Toyotas sold in America. In addition to that, the Pacifica is going to be more modern feeling on the inside and definitely more comfortable than the Sienna. And lastly, versus the Kia Sedona, we see basically the same arguments on both sides. The Sedona is less expensive than the other options, starting at $27,200. So the Delta in savings is going to be probably the smallest versus the Kia Sedona and the Pacifica Hybrid, but it's still very real and it's still definitely going to be there. Now, the Kia does have one of the long longest warranties in the industry and the longest warranty in this group. So that is a factor if you're really worried about overall cost of operation from a maintenance and reliability standpoint. 
But again, the Kia can't really compete with the Pacifica Hybrid when it comes to overall fuel economy. That's the reason that the Pacifica Hybrid is quite simply my top pick for minivans in America, or really any three row large need in America. If you're looking for a large three row vehicle, whether you're looking at a bigger crossover or perhaps even some of those SUVs, and you're not really looking for the all wheel drive ability, you're simply looking for the passenger room on the inside, a minivan and the Pacifica Hybrid is gonna be your best bet every time. The third row accommodations in the average minivan in America, uh, and that goes for the Odyssey, the Sienna, the Sedona, etc. They're just gonna be more comfortable back there in the third row, and you're gonna have more cargo space behind the third row than any three row crossover in America and some of those large three row SUVs as well. So if you're shopping for something that will carry seven to eight passengers, definitely look at a minivan. And if you're looking for that seven passenger option, definitely look at the Pacifica Hybrid. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure and click that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen if you haven't already done so. Click up there to the top of your screen if you wanna support this channel and I'll see you next week.